Now I'd like to take a look at how you would create a brand new real-time SQC alarm using the SQC alarm manager. You start this up by choosing Pi SMT. So I'll go into Pi System, Pi System Management Tools. And you'll notice this is a plug-in to the system management tools. Now when you launch the system management tools, you do have to connect to your server. If your server is not in this list that you see right here, you need to add the server. So just choose File, Connections. Go out and do a right mouse click on this workspace and choose Add Server. This is where you would specify the name of your server, the default user, etc. So once I have this connection dialog box open, uh, that's where I can add new servers. If the server is already here, you can just select there and that would connect to the server. And then from there, I would go into the SQC Alarms to, uh, to start working on the alarms. And before we do that, in the next slide we'll take a look at these alarm groups. Now before we're ready to go in and create these real-time SQC alarms, let's talk a little bit about the point sources associated with alarms. Now this is the alarm group manager that ships with the Pi S SMT. And if you do a right mouse click on the workspace there and choose point sources, you can see that we have specific point sources we use for different types of alarms. Well, the point to mention here is that the SQC alarms, they will default to a point source of Q. So uh, that's what you're going to notice in the points that you're going to be building. The SQC alarm points will have a point source of Q. To start building a real-time SQC alarm tag, I'm going to go into the alarm section under SQC alarms. And I can either hit the New button right there, or I can do a right mouse click and choose New Alarm. Now at this point, we need to give this alarm a name. This is going to be the name that we're going to be using for all the auto naming of those tags that are built in addition to this alarm tag. I'm going to call this My SQC Alarm 1. And I'll give it some description. You have to select an alarm group, or I shouldn't say you have to, but you can select an alarm group and that controls the categorization of this alarm in the alarm viewer. So let me bring up the alarm viewer on the screen for a second. In this alarm viewer, you can see that you can do a kind of a drill down through the different groups that are organized within all the alarm groups, well, within the alarm system. So for example, HF area is just one area and if I select Unit 1, I can find just those alarms within Unit 1. Well, I can build alarm areas that are specific for SQC, and in fact, I have built one. I have built an alarm area. The descriptor is called Test for SQC Alarms, okay? and that is something called the Alarm Group. So within the Alarm View, I can select which alarms I'm interested in looking at using these groups. Now, these groups are built over in the Alarm Group Editor. I'm going to show you that editor in just a second, but if you notice here, I'm building my tag. I get a choice of different alarm groups. I'm going to choose SQC Alarms. The natural question is, where did this list come from? Well, I've got a second copy of System Management Tools open. Let me bring this up on the foreground. See, this is the Alarm Group Manager, and within the Alarm Group Manager, this is where I create new alarm groups. So I can add groups, I can create hierarchies of groups, and in fact this hierarchy you, you see here, it's the same hierarchy we saw in the alarm viewer. So this is where I built that SQC alarm. Okay. Uh, if we were to take a look at this, it has a descriptor that appears in the alarm viewer. So it's the descriptor, not the name that appears in the alarm viewer. Now here it's the name, not the descriptor that we choose from. So I'm choosing, in this case, the SQC Alarms Alarm Group. There's a behavior control section you can see here that just controls some of the bells and whistles that, uh, well, some of the configuration elements. So for example, uh, we would suggest uh, clearing the alarm on subsystem startup is, is a good option. It simply means that when you stop the alarm subsystem and then start it back up again, it starts all the alarms fresh. Also, you can decide to clear the alarm on a control limit change. In other words, if you're changing from one product to another and uh, 
when you do that, you're changing the value of the control limits, that's probably a good time to stop the calculations and start over again. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of nuisance alarms. And then finally, we have this auto acknowledge. Auto acknowledge simply turns on the auto acknowledge feature of these alarm tags. We don't have to acknowledge them as uh, alarm tags. They will automatically acknowledge. And that does affect what you see in the alarm viewer. As I've mentioned a couple of times earlier, this wizard will automatically create a series of tags. Now, the that's some the behavior that can be changed for you. If you disable this, then uh, we're assuming that you're going to go out and build these tags yourself. There's no problem. You can do that. Uh, these tags are well defined. If you look in the SQC Alarm Manager, you can find out what their attributes need to be. Of course, that's fairly rare that people do that. Uh, people prefer to have the wizard to generate these tags automatically, you know, with all the right configuration elements. And as you can see, we have an option to put a suffix or a prefix. Most people choose suffix. That's the default. And we will use the naming convention you see here for the different types of tags using these suffixes. So as we saw earlier, you know, the, the source tag is going to be named uh, tag name dot source. But because we've chosen that as the suffix, this is the delimiter we've chosen to go between the name you choose and the suffix. So the example we see right here is this MySQC alarm dash UCL. Okay. Now, in addition, to those tags that are created automatically. As we said earlier, there are some optional points, and this is where you get to choose whether you generate those or not, and what the suffixes will be for those. Now, this is actually not the only place you get to choose. So you, later on, in a later step, you can choose which of these four you will generate. On this page, you get to choose the chart type. Also, this page does show you the source tag that's going to be auto-created. And again, if you chose not to create that yourself, you can choose this to go out and find the source tag if you've defined that on your own. I'm going to choose an X bar chart. Now, when you choose anything under the chart of individuals, uh, this is where you'll get the, uh, well, this is where you'll be able to respond to the prompt for the raw data tag and the sampling method. See, with the chart of individuals, the really, uh, the raw data tag is the same tag as the name of the tag that you configured back here. That's the raw data tag. With any other type of tag, tag or SQC alarm, like an X-bar chart, then you do have to supply a raw data tag because the raw data is what we use to produce the source, the derived values. So my raw data tag in this case is going to be a tag called stationary5. And I'm going to use, in this case, event-based sampling using a sample size of two events. And what this means, of course, is that we will get two events and then produce a derived value, an X-bar calculation, stuff that result into the source tag, and then move on with the next two events. This is all event-based, meaning we just get events up to the sample size and then move on to the next. Now, you can also do it using time-based sampling in which case you specify, you still specify the sample size, but you also specify the timing of that sample. So here's the screen that lists the tags that are going to be built for your control limits, your reset tag, and those optional tags. And if you recall, I said that on a previous screen, now this is where we set those suffixes or prefixes. And in this case, it's defaulting. I'm using the default suffixes. And this is where you see the actual names of the tags. Now, as before, if you choose, you can use existing tags or you can substitute different tags for an existing alarm. You can also choose whether to create these tags or not. Now, this is where you have the opportunity right here to set the initial values for your control limits. Those control limits would be uh, stored in the archive for that tag. And any changes, of course, are going to be archived with that. And you can make those subsequent changes either using some manual logger kind of a program, a manual entry program. Or you can actually do it directly from 
the system management tools. If you go into the SQC alarm manager, do a right mouse click, you notice you have the option to edit the control limits. So you can actually, in fact, edit the control limits from here. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, if your control limits are coming from another application like process point or a calculation, well, this is where you would specify those tags. Again, we've described these tags elsewhere, but one more time, the status tag is recording an integer that shows us the status of all the test patterns that are currently in the alarm. The comment tag is what is used from within the alarm view client to store comments for this tag. And here's our specification and lower specification limits. These are optional, of course. If you do run your process using spec limits, then this is where we can indicate them. But as I said, these are all optional.